Hello, this is Gary Auden, and welcome to this Educast, Telecom Fraud, Risk, and Prevention, sponsored by TransNexus and Telecom Reseller. As we always do, we talk about our speakers, and with me today is Jim Dalton, CEO of TransNexus. And as we always do, we talk about what we're going to talk about, and let's talk about our agenda. Telecom fraud has been around forever. It didn't have to come out just with VOIP. There are case studies that Jim's going to talk about, one dialing for dollars, another one whack-a-mole, which shows you what happens with telecom fraud and how it works. We're going to discuss fraud prevention, and then the next important thing is the ROI, return on investment, and finally something called SIP analytics, which brings telecom fraud prevention to a new level using newer technologies. So let's start off with the first slide. Jim, what is telecom fraud and why is it so important? Gary, telecom fraud is really pretty simple. There are two types of telecom fraud. Uh, one type has been around for, for decades, and that's toll fraud. And that's where the bad guys break into an enterprise telephone system and generate thousands, maybe tens of thousands of dollars of fraudulent long distance calls. And the enterprise gets stuck with the bill. Uh, they don't want to pay their service provider. It just creates a, a major problem for the customer and their service provider. So that's toll fraud. Uh, and it's more common today because there's so many voice over IP PBXs that are uh, easily hacked into because enterprises don't manage the security of those servers. The other type of telecom fraud is really a, a new type of fraud, it's, which is really developed in the last few years. It's inbound calls, and those can be uh, ranging from annoying robocalls that uh, people can't stand to get to more dangerously, they're scams where people will spoof the calling number to pretend to be the IRS, a bank, a credit card company, whoever it might be, and then fool the calling party to give them uh, important identity information so they can steal from them. So there are really two types of fraud that we address, and, and both of them are, uh, are serious. Maybe the best way to talk about this is to describe a case study. Would you go into the dialing for dollars case study, please? This first case study is a great example about how any kind of enterprise, no matter large or small, can be a victim of telecom fraud. This is an example of a seven-person architectural firm, and here they are on the front page of the New York Times. And what this story was about was this firm had an average telephone bill of $400 a month, but over one weekend, the fraudsters broke into their telephone system and generated $166,000 in long business charges. And they were liable for that bill and were in a lawsuit with their provider to try to avoid paying it. And they had to pay that bill. The point is, anybody, any, any company is, and any person, they could be a victim of telecom fraud and be stuck with a very big bill for the loss. Now, what actually happened here, and uh, what were the results? You know, it's it's a very simple uh, hack. Uh, it's it's clever, but simple. The bad guys found a way into one of the analog lines. This telephone, this in architectural firm had an old style four line analog PBX. The bad guys compromised one of those lines and set up call forwarding to an international number. And then once they set up that call, they set up three-way calling to add another call leg to another international destination. And then they would hang up. And those two international call legs would both stay in place for a half an hour or longer through the network. And they would repeat that process again and again and again. And at the peak of the attack, there were over 500 simultaneous calls in place from a one-line PBX system that had been hacked. Now, does that mean uh, you, the calls are made to very high cost calling locations? That's exactly the point. What the bad guys do, they call premium rate numbers. And what those numbers are is the originator of that call gets a cut of the, of the, uh, the revenue. And really, the, the the, the model is, you've seen it before, you may uh, dial in or, or pay for the American Red Cross, you dial a number, or you make a text, and you get a, you make a contribution to the Red Cross, and you get charged by your telephone company. It's the same sort of model for these premium rate numbers, except it's illegal activity. 
the pre the fraudsters hack into a telephone they make calls to these premium rate numbers run up a huge bill and then they get a cut of the revenue that's charged to the victim and that's really how they monetize their fraud so out of this hundred and sixty six thousand dollar fraud probably the bad guys got away with forty thousand dollars in cash well let's move on to the next one I love the title of this is rather humorous whack-a-mole talk about that please Gary, this is the same sort of fraud. This is also another toll fraud. And in this case, uh, the service provider actually had a fraud monitoring system in place. And the point just goes to show, even with protection, you're vulnerable to significant losses. In this case, what happened, uh, the bad guys broke into a telephone system of an enterprise and they started making uh, outbound calls to high cost destinations. And you can see where each one of those X's indicate the, uh, the long distance countries, the destinations for these calls, the high cost locations. And their system picked up these calls after the calls were completed and they collected call detail records. And the, the service provider would realize what happened and they would go in and shut down those calls. But here's the problem. By the time the call ended and they collected the first call detail records, about 25 minutes had passed. And by that time, a, a significant amount of fraud had already taken place before the fraud analysis system could alert the service provider and get them to turn the calls off. Once they knocked down the calls at the, at the network operating system, the fraudsters would wait a short time and then they would start another attack to a different country. And this one went on all weekend long. And over the weekend, over about a, over a dozen different countries that were attacked, they ran up a $15,000 bill, and the point here, they were using a fully functioning fraud management system, but it was based on call detail record analysis, which is really too slow to stop the fraud because it doesn't recognize the attack at the beginning of the calls. What the, Does this mean that it's automated notification, but it's manual uh, prevention? That's right. There's definitely automated notification, and there could be automated uh blocking of calls that could be possible through systems integration it's a little bit difficult but really the key point here is it's slow to detect because this fraud analysis approach is based on call detail records and the records are not created until the calls are completed and typically fraudulent calls can last 20 or 30 minutes so there's a lot of bad calls that can take place before the first call detail record is collected for analysis well how do we prevent this from occurring well, the approach that we take is we look at the signaling and we try to detect the calls at the beginning of a fraud attack. And if we see unusual activity from just as little as two or three calls, we can recognize right up front, this is an unusual call pattern. We need to stop these calls from this call source to the destination and automatically block those calls or divert those calls. Now, you have a term called SIP analytics, and that sounds very modern. How does that work? Well, Gary, it's a lot simpler really than this drawing indicates. Uh, it's as simple as this. You can configure your phone system to send a SIP invite to our fraud detection software. And in milliseconds, it returns two values, one of two values, either a 404, which means the call is good, route the call, and that's a standard SIP message that every phone system will know to try the call again with a different destination or a SIP 603 decline message, which means block the call. It's just that simple. You configure the fraud software, it looks like a SIP endpoint in your network, and it responds with information to either block the call or route advance the call to complete it. Now, we're talking about fraud, but what are the benefits of preventing this fraud? It's not just simply getting rid of something that's annoying. It's definitely much more than that. It is insurance to protect you from Big financial losses. Uh, we can see even, you know, with no protection, you can have triple digit losses, uh, six figure losses easily. And even with a uh, fraud detection system that's based on a call detail record analysis, you could be looking at losing more than $10,000 over a weekend. So the point being is it's, it's clearly a, uh, it's a money saver, but also for inbound fraud, if you're a service provider or an enterprise, you protect your subscribers, you protect your telephone users from inbound calls, and also potentially from criminals who will try to perpetrate a scam. Now, this is a question I think a lot of people wonder. Can we ever make this stop? 
You know, Gary, unfortunately, as you mentioned, the beginning fraud has been around for decades, and I don't think it's going away. And really all enterprises can do and service providers is try to protect themselves. You can tighten up the security on all your computers, your telephone equipment, that's important, but they'll always find a way in. And when they do find a way in, you've got to have a system in place that will detect that breach and be able to stop it immediately. Now the next question, which is always the big question is, uh, can I afford to do this? Is there an ROI for fraud prevention? It just takes one fraud event to cover the cost of fraud prevention software. It's a, it's a great ROI. It's very easy to justify. If you've never had fraud, you may think it's not worth it, but one event will definitely cost you more than the cost of a prevention. At the very bottom of the slide, you have the word insurance. Is it possible to get telecom fraud insurance? Does it exist? It does not exist as far as we know. Your liability insurance uh, will not cover losses from telecom fraud. Let's come on and look at SIP analytics in your way of doing things that is a better way to prevent fraud. Really the key point is we're looking at the signaling before the calls are even set up. So we can detect fraud at the very beginning of an attack. And the other aspect about SIP analytics that uh, is really convenient and used uh, for customers is it's a really simple integration. SIP analytics, a fraud server using SIP analytics, it literally looks like another SIP endpoint on your network because it is like another SIP phone. And you just point your SIP invites to the fraud server and like I said earlier, it will respond with two messages, simple messages, basic SIP messages to either route advance the call because it's good, there's no fraud, or the call should be blocked. So it's, it's simple integration. So those two things are, are really the factors that, that lead this new technique to be a new way to, that's much better than what's existed in the past, which is the call detail record analysis, which absolutely works, but it's just too slow. The time it takes to collect call detail records, a lot of fraud can be perpetrated in that time. There are other devices that look at the signaling uh, in real time before calls uh, are set up. You can set up probes in your network and they absolutely work, except it's complicated, it's expensive, it's a lot of hardware to install in your network, and it doesn't have the simple integration with your SIP network to block calls, uh, fraudulent calls when they occur. If I could summarize this, you're saying SIP analytics is actually a proactive approach as where traditionally a lot of approaches have been reactive. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, TransNexus is not a company many people know. Would you tell us who you are? Gary, we've been in the voice over IP business for 20 years. We started writing software for, for routing, optimized routing and billing of voice over IP calls. Uh, in the early 2000s and we have with our customers actually they have led us into fraud detection and I think that's what puts us into a un unique situation uh, we understand SIP signaling we understand intelligent routing and I think we're really the only firm that, that we know of that has a combined intelligent routing and fraud detection solution which is really efficient and one dip to our platform we provide not only optimized routing but we provide this real-time fraud detection now, you have a number of solutions. Would you go through those, please? Sure. The first one, SIP Analytics, is really a feature. It's a feature in all of our solutions. And uh, the two main offerings we have are Clear IP, which is a hosted platform. It's perfect for small service providers or enterprises. And it's a complete solution for managing fraud, outbound toll fraud, which could be a risk for the uh, for the architectural firm that we looked at that lost $166,000 in a weekend, but also for inbound fraud. It analyzes the calling number and can block or divert calls that look like they're a robo calls or potentially uh, scam calls coming into your network. The other platform, NexOSS, which has been our flagship product for 20 years, is an on-premises based platform and it's a complete suite of applications for managing a SIP trunking network. Everything from lease cost routing, quality of service routing, fraud control, and billing. And CDR Analyze, our last platform, is a standalone archiving and reporting database. It gives you great visibility in the call detail records generated from your network. I'd like to point out, people, that not only can you get information about TransNexus, you can actually contact Jim Dalton 
we don't always have the speaker from the, the credible source available to you. Jim has provided a number of resources here, blogs. I'm impressed by the number of patents they also have. It's over two dozen of them to demonstrate they've really taken a lead in the market. So I'd like to thank you, Jim, for this educast, and people look forward to future educasts with uh, TransNexus. Thank you, Gary.